Uh, the New Testament authors, uh, uh, particularly Paul, um, really stress that uh, they are not, this is not something new, but it's, uh, it's something which is grounded in the Old Testament. And so uh, if you read the Old Testament, um, uh, Paul particularly speaks of Abraham. Uh, he also mentions David, but Abraham, uh, before he was circumcised, which kind of represents the law, um, he, uh, he was actually uh, justified by his faith. He was made right with God. And I really think it's important to see uh, Genesis 15 in the overall development of Scripture. Genesis 15 comes before Sinai, Mount Sinai, where the law is given. And the whole issue is, um, how is Abraham going to be able to live before God? And um, we get his call, and he follows God um, in Genesis 12. He leaves Ur, and then he moves to, uh, to Canaan. Um, but his first actual dialogue with God occurs in chapter 15, and it's a crucial chapter in the entire narrative. Um, and uh, he's followed God because of the promise um, that he's going to be a great nation, and he doesn't have any children. And, uh, and all he can see is he's getting older, and his wife is getting older, and there's no way um, it's going to happen naturally. Um, so he looks at his servant, Eliezer, and he says, essentially, um, this individual is probably going to be the one through whom the promise is to be given uh, or to be, to, to be continued. And um, God says, no. Uh, and Abraham questions it again. And then uh, God says, brings him out in this incredible uh, passage where it's at night and he looks up at the stars and he says, these are going to be your children, as many as these stars. And the text just basically laconically says, Abram believed and God credited it to him for righteousness. And that's a way of saying, uh, when you look at the way that word is used, credited to him, that's another way of saying, uh, instead of the Hebrew saying, uh, Yahweh said, you are righteous. It says he credited it to him for righteousness. And, uh, and that's basically saying you're in a right standing. Now, why are you in a right standing before God? By anything you've done? No. It's, uh, it's essentially as a result of uh, your trust in this promise. And this, uh, this is kind of not an inactive faith either. It's, a, it's not mental assent. He kind of throws himself on the promise. This is all he has. And uh, by virtue of this faith, um, he's justified. And, of course, uh, as you move through the text, uh, he's, uh, he's circumcised 13 years later um, as a sign that, uh, that this is, he's kind of died to himself uh, and that he's trusting in God. And, uh, and then you see what he does later uh, in the stories, uh, the, the, the continuing stories. He's obeying God now. Um, but he's, how does it all start? It starts as a result of his faith. And I think this is very, very important um, when you look at the text. Um, so Paul really stresses um, that uh, the justification is not something invented in the new, uh, in the new uh, uh, covenant, but it's something that goes right, has its roots right at the very beginning of, uh, of the old covenant, which is uh, found in Abraham's faith. There's another passage, which that's kind of a, neg a positive passage. The other passage is a negative passage, and Paul picks up on David uh, after his sins. Um, he says that God did not credit unto him the same word, um, sin as a result of his confession to God uh, for his sin. So in a way, God forgave him. Uh, and why did God forgive him? I mean, he didn't do anything good. Uh, all he did was confess his sin before God in an honest way. And, uh, and it was, so in a way, uh, Paul's looking at this, and, and uh, the, the one side of the coin, the positive, is Abraham, is justified by faith, but the negative also uh, is uh, is is also true. Uh, David is uh, justified uh, by his confession. God does not credit unto him sin. So uh, you know, as far as this is concerned, I, I think it's very very important to see that uh, justification by faith is not something at all that just simply happens as a result of Paul's theology. In fact, Paul quotes Genesis fifteen six, um, the the passage about Abraham three times. Times in his uh, in his work uh, to stress the importance of this doctrine for uh, for salvation. <laughs> <laughs>